Thanks. My first guest tonight is the Urban Infrastructure Minister, Paul Fletcher. Paul Fletcher, welcome. Thanks, Patricia. Good to be with you. So have you checked your own citizenship uh, since this scandal broke out? Have you gone through your own process? Well, Patricia, I was uh, pre-selected in 2009. At the time, I was a dual citizen, British and Australian. On the Monday after I was pre-selected, I commenced the process of uh, repudiating my British citizenship. Uh, there's a well-established process where you work through the British High Commission. Uh, I received written confirmation that my, citizen, my British citizenship had come to an end. Uh, that's on my website for anybody who wants to go and have a look at it. So you, you're fully done, no re reason to re-look at it because other MPs, it's been reported, have been re-looking at it because that's what your state branches have been organising. Is that your understanding? Uh, my understanding is that there is, some, uh, there, are, there is an administrative process underway, uh, you know, out of um, good, good uh, administrative practice. So at the moment there is what? Can, can you describe what it looks like? Uh, well, I think those are questions that are best directed to uh, the federal director and the state directors. All I can say is that the uh, state director in New South Wales called me uh, to um, confirm that that was the case. I explained to him what I've just explained to you, um, and that was it was a 30-second conversation. OK, so there is an audit going on. It's just not a public audit. Well, I don't... I, I, all I can tell you is th about the call I received uh, from, the, uh, from the state director. And when did you receive that call? Uh, in the last few days. OK, so this is, like, literally in the last week? I in the last few days, yes. OK. Kevin Andrews has had a swipe at Malcolm Turnbull's prime ministership, saying he thinks voters are unhappy about inadequate leadership in Canberra. What do you make of this? Uh, well, if you're asking me to respond to that uh, comment from Kevin Andrews, I disagree with it. Why do you disagree with it, though? Because I suppose what he's really going to is that there is a view that the public's really frustrated by this dual citizenship saga. It has been bleeding into the agenda. Well, it's gone on and on. And the Prime Minister is in charge of the country and is in a substantially important position to try and put an end to it, but he won't. You know, Patricia, uh, I did some door knocking in my electorate on Friday afternoon. Uh, went and spoke with quite a number of people in Hornsby, in the northern end of my electorate. Not one person raised this citizenship issue with me. Uh, so I accept that the uh, press gallery is fascinated by it, uh, but can I be clear, clear that what the Turnbull government is doing is getting on with the job on issues like the National Energy Guarantee. Now, these are the real issues. Uh, we're getting on with the job of uh, delivering significant, very significant growth in jobs numbers. We're getting on with the job of providing uh, national security and economic security. Sure, so look but with respect, Paul Fletcher, it's really hard to get on with the job when every day you're distracted by today again, Alex Hawke, Josh Frydenberg a couple of days ago, every day or second day or third day, but really frequently, and you know it too. I mean, I'm just talking about what we're seeing here. I'm not making it up. The, this is not fake news. It's all real. There's a new case. And so you might want to get on with it, but you can't, can you? Uh, well, I disagree with that, Patricia. Uh, what uh, I spend my days doing as a minister and what all of my ministerial colleagues spend their days doing uh, is working on the responsibilities we are charged with to deliver outcomes for the Australian people. I mean, just look at what's been happening in Perth uh, yesterday and today. A very important conference uh, directed at improving the business and economic relationships between Australia and Germany. Germany is the largest economy in the Euro European Union, one of the largest economies in the world, uh, and that's something that uh, work in preparation for that has been underway for several years. It's been a terrific success. Those trade relationships are enormously important. And so those are the things that uh, the Turnbull government, uh, the Prime Minister and ministers in the Turnbull government are focused on. Economic security, uh, national security, we're getting on with that every day. OK, well, Kevin Andrews does say that Australians want clear, decisive and stable leadership. I mean, this is a former minister in your government, a backbencher with a pretty loud voice. He's saying that there's not clear, decisive, stable leadership. That's, that's a pretty big statement, isn't it, from someone on your own side? 
Uh, well, look, I, I think what we are doing is getting on across a whole range of areas. Uh, and with... yet your own MPs don't think you are. Well, look, if you... Uh, you know, Kevin Andrews can speak for himself. I'm not going to be a commentator on Kevin Andrews. Let me be... But let me point to, for example, the work that's being done uh, by Alan Tudge and Christian Porter in the social services and human services portfolios. Enormously important work, for example, in introducing uh, a drugs testing regime for people who are on unemployment benefits. Now, that's been very widely supported because the Australian people uh, believe that... If, you are if you're not employed uh, and you're properly being supported uh, through unemployment benefits, that, that money shouldn't be going uh, to illegal drugs. And we're also about getting people who are on un unemployment benefits uh, equipped to get back in the workforce. So that, those are the kind of things that Ministers Porter and Tudge are focused on. Uh, you, can, you can look across the whole spectrum, the work that uh, Greg Hunt as Health okay. Minister is well, doing. Well, let me take you back to the substantive issue, which is this citizenship crisis, which is still very real. Penny Wong says your government either accepts Labor's proposal for a universal disclosure of all MPs and, you know, their backgrounds, or he refers MPs in doubt, including Alex Hawke and Julia Banks, to the High Court. Will you refer them? Well, look, let's be clear. There, are, there is a comprehensive legal framework set out in the Constitution and the Electoral Act in relation to the uh, requirements on members of Parliament to comply with constitutional eligibility requirements. And there is a well-established process uh, if it emerges that there are grounds to suspect that a member of Parliament uh, is not constitutionally eligible to serve. The High Court sits as the court of disputed returns and there okay, is... OK, so will you refer them in that case then? I'm, I'm sorry, will... Well, why not refer them then? If the when High Court decides, and you're you right, Alex Hawke and Julia Banks, should they be referred to the High Court then so that High Court can make the determination and clear it up? Well, the point is that there is a well-established process if there are grounds to believe that a Member of Parliament is not eligible to serve. Now, both uh, Julia Banks and Alex Hawke have clearly stated that they're Australian citizens and they don't have other citizenship. It is important to make the point that uh, everybody in the Parliament is validly elected. Uh, if there are grounds for a challenge, then the onus, the burden, is on the person who wants to bring the challenge to refer that to the High Court and make the case. That's a very important principle. So we have clearly stated, the Prime Minister has clearly stated, that we don't support the notion that we should somehow reverse the onus of proof okay, and that everybody should be guilty until proven innocent. That is okay, a complete Shorten, reversal. Let yes. me just put this to you. Bill Shorten said, Turnbull set a standard for me which he won't set for his own party. And it's true. The Malcolm only thing that's Turnbull true about Bill Shorten, the he only thing that's that true Bill about Bill Shorten, Bill Shorten has zero interest in finding a solution. Bill Shorten's but interest is in I'm creating a problem. I'm asking a very specific example. No, Labor, you, Labor you does not have a solution. Didn't the Prime Labor Minister does demand... not have a solution. You, your question is premised on the assumption that Labor no, has put forward a I workable assumption. The Labor Prime has not put demanded. Forward, Labor has not he put demanded forward a workable solution. He demanded that Bill Shorten show his papers, and Bill Shorten then did. Let's, Wasn't that reversing the onus of proof? Let's be clear. This notion from Bill Shorten that there could be some kind of process short of the High Court, which is the body under the Constitution that has the authority to resolve these matters, uh, being able to provide some kind of additional uh, clarity, it simply doesn't work, and it reveals, frankly, a misunderstanding of how our Constitution and how our Electoral Act works. Just on your portfolio, you've released a statement of expectations for the new Western Sydney Airport, which has the mandate to build the airport by, well, I think it's the end of 2026, 2026 right? 2026, that's right. But, La yeah, but Labor's infrastructure spokesman, Anthony Albanese, says the statement, you know, has all these flaws, doesn't go far enough, hasn't guaranteed any opportunities for apprentices, for instance. Will you look at that and, and think about making adjustments to that uh, plan? 
So, look, let's be clear. We've, uh, since 2014, since the Coalition Federal Government took a decision to proceed with Sydney's second airport at Badgerys Creek, we've made an enormous amount of progress. There's a very long distance yet to go, but we've made very significant progress. Draft and final environmental impact statement, the final airport plan has been issued, which establishes the legal authority uh, to build an airport. Uh, we've established WSA Co, a government-owned company which will build and own the airport. That occurred after we had extensive consultation with Sydney Airport Group and they, at the end of that process, indicated that they would not be taking up their right of first refusal. We've committed $5.3 billion of equity to uh, build, to, to fund the construction of the airport. We've uh, appointed the first four directors and there'll be more directors appointed in coming months. And one of the other things we've done, as you've rightly said, is we've issued a statement of expectations to the company. Now that addresses a whole range of matters. For example, it addresses the design standards that we expect for the terminal. This terminal will be a very important public building we want it to reflect the confidence and aspirations of the people of Western Sydney. Uh, we've also talked about a range of matters, including uh, employment matters, uh, and there will be more that we have to say uh, in a range of other processes. Uh, so it is important that with a major infrastructure project of this kind, that we are following best practice when it comes to things like uh, training. You know, it's, it is best practice on large infrastructure projects to have uh, significant training commitments. For example, on the West Connects project, there's a major training academy. On uh, the Northern Road, which is part of the Western Sydney Infrastructure Plan, there's also a significant training facility uh, recently announced. Uh, and we will certainly uh, be conforming to good practice in relation to Western Sydney Airport. It's a major, major project, substantial public expenditure, and certainly there are and will be commitments in relation to training uh, and in relation to local employment, uh, Indigenous employment and other such matters. Paul Fletcher, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Patricia. I'm joined